Hello viola players, we will be working on Song of the Wind in your Suzuki book. I'm going to start by doing a playthrough of the first line and then I'll break it down a little. Here's the first line. One, two, here I go. <laughs> So if you're following along in your book, you'll notice that this song has a lot of due days, a lot of eighth notes. So um, that can be scary for people when they first look at it because you think, oh man, I have to play this really fast. But that's not true. You heard that I played it actually quite slowly. I played it do, day, do, day. As long as all of my eighth notes are the same speed, then it doesn't have to be fast when you're first learning it. All right, this will mean that when you have a quarter note that it will feel extra long, like there was one at the end of the line, that will feel extra long, almost like a half note, but um, that slow speed should help you as you're learning the song. I'm going to play the first two measures now, and this is just for the style of my eighth notes. So those dots above the notes are telling me to play them in a short, staccato style. So if you're thinking about something we already learned, um, when you do a Mississippi hot dog, it's almost like every note is a hot dog. Here are those first two measures one more time. All right, so that's the style that you'll play your eighth notes throughout the piece. Now let's talk about measures three and four. I'm going to play that and then um, I'll show you what I did. Here's measures three and four. Okay, um, so you'll notice that quarter note in measure four felt quite long. So here's what I did in measure three. In measure three, I planted down my B and then my third finger went to the G on my D string. My, notice my B is staying down, so it went like that. And then it hopped over to my A string for the high D. And then when I needed that B at the end of the measure, it was already placed down. So let's practice keeping our B down and crossing over to the G. So we're gonna go like this. I'm gonna get up close so you can see my fingers, but this isn't good posture. So you see that my B stayed down? When I crossed over my third finger, my second finger came along too to the D string. So let's practice that a few times. We're gonna go from a B, keeping that first finger planted, and then our G will go um, over to our D string, like this. And let's do that a few times to get used to it. Again. One more time. Now our third finger is just going to hop over to our A string for that high D, and then we'll add the B after it. So let's do all of measure three very slowly. Here, I'll, go, I'll do it first. So my wrist is staying nice and straight, and my B is staying down the entire measure. Let's do all of measure three three times. Planting down my B. My wrist is straight. My fingers are hovering. Here I go. Measure three. Ready, go. Two more times. Ready, go. One more time. Ready, go. And notice my fingers were in place before I started to bow, um, like this. Set, set. All right, so just make sure that you're timing your finger and your bow correctly. If you need to pause the video to get that worked out, or um, you need to slow down the speed of that last three times that we did, that's totally okay. Now I'm gonna put measures three and four together and notice what I do after measure four. Here are measures three and four.
Okay, so that quarter note felt long in measure four, right? Because I went do day, rest, rest. All right, and in that rest, notice this thing I'm doing with my arm. It's called a bow lift. Let's practice that. So I'm on a down bow, and I also want my next note to be a down bow. So I pick it up and circle it and reset for a down bow, like this. Let's do that a few times. And you'll notice if you're crash landing on your bow lift, notice where I reset on my bow. Right, I do it a little lower in the bow because it's bouncy up here, you can see that. Um, and also um, check and make sure that your thumb is bent on your bow because your thumb is your shock absorber of your bow. So if it's not bent, then all the pressure goes to the stick. Let's do a couple more, just double check your bow hold and make sure that you're landing about like here in your bow. Okay, now let's put all of measures three and four together with the bow lift. Okay, let's do that together three times. Ready, go. Bow lift again. Now looking down to the next line, um, measures five and six are the same as three and four. So we've already done that work. So let's do a full playthrough of the first half. Measures one through six. One, two, ready, go. measure seven. The trickiest thing about this part is remembering how many times you've played each note. There's a lot of repeated notes. So I'm going to play through that section. You'll notice something a little strange in the middle and then the rest of it is really just paying attention to how many times you have to play each note when they repeat. So I am starting from measure seven. That is the third measure on the second line. One, two, here I go. I did two different bow lifts. The first one is going to be um, in between the first and second measures of the last line. The pitches you have in that measure, in case your book has um, different line breaks, are D, F sharp, A, and the A is a quarter note. So after that A quarter note, you're going to do a bow lift. So I'll let you find that measure. And let's do that measure three times. It's a fast bow lift. We don't have a rest for it, but we can handle it. So remember your good bow hold and remember where you place your bow after you do your bow lift. So we're going to do that measure. Ready, go. Lift again. One more time. Ready, go. Lift and then you'll be ready to go on. And then at the very end, if you plan to repeat the whole piece, your book might have a repeat sign at that very, very end, um, then you would do a bow lift there as well. All right, I'm going to start again from measure seven and do another playthrough to the end. And if it's helpful for you to shadow bow along or move your fingers along so you can kind of get the tune in your ear, um, you are more than welcome to do that. I'm going to start from measure seven on an A. One, two, 
here I go. And that's Song of the Wind.